Frank Menchaca is the Chief Product Officer at the Society of Automotive Engineers. And Frank, you're on a mission here to get the public more aware of autonomous vehicles. We definitely are. Um, we have uh, launched a program um, in automated vehicle safety testing. Uh, and um, we are at the center of it, but we're not the only contributor. There are going to be contributors from all over the industry, from the global research community, uh, and from the government. You did an interesting experiment down in Florida, and take it from there. Yeah, so a big part of this program is also public awareness. We think that the only way this technology is really going to scale is if the public understands it, understands its role in the development of it, understands the risks and also the benefits of it. And so down in uh, Tampa, in cooperation with a number of entities, Velodyne, uh, uh, Perone Robotics, and uh, Tampa Hillsboro Highway Authority, we closed the highway uh, and we had some uh, moderately high speed um, uh, testing of an automated vehicle. We had 300 citizens from the Tampa Bay area um, come. We interviewed them on the way in to ask them about what they thought about automated vehicles and we interviewed them on the way out. Um, and we are building... A on the way out meaning after they had been in one of these vehicles. That's exactly right. And, um, and we're building a database of public sentiment so that we can inform the industry and inform the research community uh, all about how the public thinks about this technology in order for us to help them develop a sense of safety uh, and safety assurance. What did the people tell you pre-test drive? So they were logically kind of skeptical going in. I've never done this before. I'm not quite sure what this is about. Uh, I was in one of the cars with uh, uh, some participants and uh, when the operator took his hands off the wheel there was kind of an audible gasp. But what was interesting was the enthusiasm with which people thought about this technology after they had taken the ride. We had one man um, who was in his 90s um, who came in and said, I just want to know what all the fuss is about. Uh, and he took, he took a ride and he came out and he said, you know what reminds me of the days when I was a little kid and, and they were testing out these things called airplanes. Uh, so I think it's a, a tremendous benefit to society for the public to really understand this technology in a completely fact-based uh, uh, way um, and we think we have a lot to add to that. 300 people is a lot. How do you uh, take it and scale it from there? So that's a great question. Um, we're looking to scale this nationwide. Uh, there are several uh, other entities that have expressed interest in working with us. Some of them were at that event. Um, and so I think what you're going to see over the next six to eight months is the rollout of a public awareness program um, that is intended to dovetail with our uh, automated vehicle safety testing program. How did you get the 300 people you did get? So actually, it was that, that was the least of our problems. We were sold out when, when word went out that you could ride in a uh, driverless car, because that's the way people understand it, you could ride in a driverless car um, and experience what it would be like for yourself. Um, we actually were completely sold out, and uh, we had people from all walks of life, all ages, come in and say, I want to I try this, I want to be part of it. What did you learn from it? I think we learned that the public really needs and deserves a fact-based approach to automated vehicles that is free from marketing, that is neutral, uh, that is, that is fact-based, that is reliable, so that they can understand what the safety risks might be, and they can also understand what the benefits to society are. The fact that people who uh, either don't wish to drive or can't drive now have access to transportation that takes them to education, that takes them to health care, uh, that takes them to jobs. I think they begin to see the tremendous benefit and they also develop a much more nuanced sense of what their role is in the automated vehicle technology development. It's great that SAE is doing it with some technology suppliers. Where are the OEMs in all this? So the OEMs are, I think, going to step up as well. I think uh, if you've sat in any of the sessions uh, that, that we've heard this morning, there is a lot of interest uh, in public sentiment and public awareness. And uh, we've been out, I, I've been out talking to companies pretty much nationwide, and this has come up consistently. The public has to be aware, has to understand how to, uh, ha how to operate within this environment, what it means to them, and what safety really means. 
I've had some people tell me in the industry that, boy, in China there isn't this problem. They're so eager for this new technology. How ironic that Americans are so skeptical of it. Yeah, well, you know, um, Americans love their cars and we have a culture of driving, we have a culture of cars. And so the idea that there would be such a paradigm change as a driverless car is uh, maybe a little bit more profound for us culturally than it might be for the Chinese. Nonetheless, um, when we talked to people after they had taken their ride, I think the, the benefits became much more palpable. It's one thing to read it on a sheet of paper or to read it in a report or read it on the newspaper, but once you've taken the ride in the vehicle and you can understand that this can help people who are sight impaired, who have mobility issues, who no longer wish to drive, who can't drive, I think the, the, the benefits become really palpable. Thanks for the update, Frank. Okay. I really like what you've done here. Thank you. Appreciate it. Future Mobility is about digitizing the driver, vehicle, and environment. Thanks to high-performance radar sensor technology, autonomous driving will soon be reality.